Welcome to the tutorial on independent samples t-tests, also known as unpaired t-tests. The purpose of conducting these types of tests is to compare means for only two groups on a number of dependent variables. These two groups have to be independent or not related to each other. That is, they cannot be twin pairs, they cannot be partners in a relationship or siblings in the same home. What you can do is you will go to Analyze, and you will compare means, and you'll go down to Independent Samples t-tests. Once you see this, you'll see your list of variables here, as well as the test variables, also known as your dependent variables here. So for the purpose of this example, we're going to be comparing males and females on a number of health outcomes. We're going to go ahead and look at depression. So in my data set, that's going to be depression as measured in 2002, as well as physical health. So physical health 2002. And my grouping variable is going to indicate to SPSS what two groups I want to compare on. In my example, it is gender or sex. So I'm going to go ahead and click sex and move it over as my grouping variable. You'll see these two question marks here, so we have to define our groups. In my data set, males are considered one and females are considered zero. So I can go ahead and put group one as my females and group two as my males. It does not matter which order I put the groups in. I could have put group one as males or one. I could have put group two as zero for females. All this does is change the sign on your T statistic because of how the T is calculated, but it doesn't change anything related to your results or conclusions. So go ahead and press continue. There are not too many options here. You can go ahead and stick with the default. The only times you might want to change it are as if you want to change your confidence interval to perhaps 99%. Um, as you will see with many of the other tests, this will all often be part of your options, whether to exclude cases and analysis by analysis or list-wise. This is how your program will deal with any missing data. Analysis by analysis means that as long as an individual has data for that particular dependent variable, it will be included in that analysis. However, on the exclude cases list-wise, if your individual has missing data on any of the dependent variables, whether it's the analysis that we're looking at or not, it will be excluded. So generally speaking, we can stick with the default and we can press continue. You can press OK or you can press paste. I'll do paste for this tutorial just to show you what it looks like. And I can go ahead and um, press the big play button and it will run my t-test. So what we see here is it will give me my descriptive statistics so I can see the means and standard deviations for both males and females on these two variables of interest. Something that's um, important to note for the t-test is that one of the underlying assumptions of the t-test is that there is something called the quality of variances. We like that equality of variances to be met before we can decide on how we're going to interpret the t-test. That's the first two columns you'll see here. It's an F statistic and it's p-value. For depression as measured in 2002, we can see that this test is significant, which means that the variances of females and the variances of males on depression is significantly different from one another. Therefore, our equality of variances assumption is not met. Because it is not met, we're going to read this bottom line here. You see a query, equal variance is not assumed. We're going to read the, off this line, and that is the line in which we're going to make any conclusions from. You can see that when our variances are not assumed, we get penalized in our degrees of freedom. In this case, because we have a large enough sample size, the penalty is not that great. But with smaller samples, you'll see a much bigger difference in our degrees of freedom. So what we see here is that we have a P of our t-test here 
of less than 0.05, which means that males and females are significantly different in depression. And how do we tell who's higher and who's lower? We can go back to our group statistics box and we can see that females are significantly higher than males on depression scores in 2002. So let's go ahead and look at our um, physical health index. We can see that our Levine test for the equality of variances, because my p-value is greater than 0.05, we can conclude that they have a quality of variances between males and females on physical health. Therefore, I can read this first line where it says equal variance is assumed. I'm going to take this t value, this degrees of freedom, and this significance value. And what this means is that males and females are significantly different from on physical health and measured in 2002. How do I tell who's higher and lower? I go back to my group statistics and I can see that males have a higher physical health score than females. And this is a statistically significant difference. What our t-test will also give us is our confidence interval, which was part of our options. This is a 95% confidence interval. What the lower bound and upper bound indicates to me is that we, because we have constructed a 95% confidence interval, we can be reasonably confident that the true population mean falls between the lower bound and the upper bound. And a confidence interval is important for us because it gives us a range of values that are possible for our population value to be. And it also we can also determine significance from this. In this case, if the low if the confidence interval includes zero, it means that zero is a possible value of the difference of means. And if it is a possible value, then in that case, they cannot be significantly different because no differences is a possible value in our population. In this case, we have both significant findings and you will see that zero is not included here. And for this one, you can see that zero is not included in these range of values. And that's it for the independent samples t-test. It's a pretty basic test. And one thing I would caution you is that you want to be careful not to include too many dependent variables in these tests. So for example, I wouldn't have wanted to include 10 different outcome variables of interest because what that does is it increases our... Um, error rate and due to chance we will be more likely to find that something is significant even though it may not actually be. Enjoy and I hope you find a lot of significant findings.